Hey, what's up guys? This is uh, Tarek here from uh, SmartBikeTrans.com and this is it. This is the Kicker Smart Bike. This is Wahoo's latest and most advanced smart trainer. One of the hottest products released last year and honestly one of the most important products released by Wahoo in a long time. A very long time. Uh, the Kicker Bike is meant for competitive cyclists and triathletes who wants to replicate their real road bike or kitty bike indoors uh, with smart functionalities such as connectivity to third party cycling apps. Uh, gradient simulation and erg mode support. Wahoo sent me this bike for this review and I'll be returning it. This is not a sponsored video ad or anything like that and you will hear my honest opinion about this bike just like I usually do with all of my other reviews. And I have been using this bike uh, as my main trainer for the past few months now and in this video I'll talk about everything you ever wanted to know about the kicker bike. I'll go over the specs and adjustability, the Wahoo fitness app, We'll take a look at the power measurement accuracy and listen to how loud or quiet the bike is and how noise transmits through the floor if you live in an apartment and even through my headset. And I'll give you my thoughts on this bike as well as what I like and other areas that I think can be improved. And if you find this video helpful, I would appreciate it if you hit the like button to help support what I do on this channel. So the Kicker bike is priced at 3,500 US dollars and for comparison's sake, uh, the Technogym Skill Bike is $4,870, the Tax Neo is $3,200, and the Stages Bike is $2,200, and the Adam Watt Bike is $2,600. The Peloton, which isn't a smart bike, but I am including it here because it's probably their biggest competitor, costs $2,245 with a $39. Uh, dollar monthly subscription fee. The kicker bike has one main feature that sits it apart from everyone else and that is the climb, which is basically tilting the whole bike to simulate gradient changes, not just by providing resistance changes to simulate inclines, but physically raising and lowering the bike to simulate changes in ascents up to 20% and descents as steep as minus 15%. Wahoo also designed the kicker bike to look and feel like a real road bike rather than a stationary bike that you see at gyms or even uh, other smart bikes like the Tax Neo for example. So there is no tray to hold a tablet or a phone or a display screen to show metrics or, and gearing combination. As a matter of fact, the only screen you will see is right below the top tube. It shows the gearing combination you're on you will see the tilt angle, connection status, and a button on the side to lock and unlock the tilting feature. And that's about it. And right below that you will see a USB port for charging your phone or tablet. The location of that screen is my fairest criticism of this bike because it's really not easy to look at. And you'll have to tilt sideways to look at which gear you are on. And if you have a towel on top of the handlebar, then you will have to move that towel and do that side tilt to see what's on the screen. The flywheel on this bike is 13 pounds, but unlike a regular kicker direct drive trainer, this one is also powered by a motor to give it more power and better overall road feel and control and also downhill simulation to maintain speed on the sense. So yes, it does have downhill simulation just like the Tax Neo. And my favorite feature of this bike is it does not require calibration. So unlike a regular kicker direct drive trainer, this bike is calibration free. You might see a calibration option in some apps like Train Road, for example, but you will just get a failed message if you try to do it. And the bike has different adjustment points to fit riders that are anywhere between 5 feet to 6 foot 4 inches tall and has a 250 pounds maximum rider's weight. You'll see quick release levers across 5 points. The stack, reach, sit back, saddle height, and frame height. And the crank arms are also adjustable and you can go from 165 all the way to 175 millimeter. Assembling the bike wasn't that difficult. The bike comes in one large box and you will need to attach the rear legs, seat posts and handlebars and that's it. Putting everything together will probably take you about 20 to 30 minutes. The kicker bike has a six point fitting adjustment, a standover height, saddle height, sit back, reach, stack height, and crank length. You can adjust each of these spots by releasing the quick release lever and making your adjustments, uh, of course, except for the cranks. Uh, but Wahoo went a step further with the fitting and you can do all of the fitting inside the Wahoo Fitness app. So if you have a professional bike fitting done using Retool, Trek, or Guru Fit system, you can enter your measurement here and the app will walk you through all the adjustment points as long as everything you entered is correct. Then it should fit and feel like your real bike. 
If you did not have a professional fitting done, you can take a picture of your bike, then you drag and drop the five points on the bike and enter the wheelbase measurement. And the app will give you your fit measurement in the comparison to the photo you took, which is really cool from a technological standpoint and cool factor, but it did not work so well for me, so I kind of scratched that one off. But the last option is to enter your height in seam and preferred position, and you can pick between race position, endurance, and relax, and the app will give you your fit measurement. This is supposedly to be the least accurate method, but if you couldn't do the first two, then this one is for sure will get you somewhere there or close enough. The last method, which is the one I ended up using because all other method for whatever reason just did not work well for me. I don't know if I have a weird fitting on my bike or what, but it's basically manually measuring the bike and making adjustments to the kicker to make it fit just like my real bike. And that worked very well. The bike broadcast in ANT Plus and Bluetooth, it will broadcast power, speed, and cadence. It does support up to three simultaneous Bluetooth connections, so you can pair it to multiple apps without worrying about another device taking over your Bluetooth. Everyone, please incorporate multiple Bluetooth connections into your devices. It's just so much better. The bike has virtual shifting and you can customize the shifters to match the shifter you have on your own bike. So if you have a Shimano Di2, no problem. SRAM Mechanical or ETAB, no problem. Campagnolo, you can do that as well. And it's all done within the app itself and the customization options are well explained and just overall well done by Wahoo. Really well done, really the best of any indoor bike out there. Uh, then you have the option to adjust and play around with all the gearing combination to match your own bike or to experience with different gearing to see which one you like that might even justify getting yourself new components or even new bike. So you can adjust the front chain ring and uh, you can have up to three and customize each one. Same thing with the rear cogs. You can have a nine to 12 speeds and customize each single cassette and all of this done in the Wahoo Fitness app. Uh, and you can set up different profiles. So if you want a profile with a 5339 and another profile with compact chain ring, uh, you can do that. The shifters on the bike are traditional shifters and feel as close to real bike shifting as you will get on an indoor bike. So this is again one of the advantages of going with the traditional bike look and design. The shifting works just like in real road bikes, very smooth and quick. Uh, you should feel a little feedback as you shift through uh, the gears. The saddle is adjustable and you can remove it all together if you want and use your own saddle. Since we're talking about the shifters and handlebars, you'll see multiple bonds on the handlebars uh, that you can play with. The bonds on the left handlebar control the climb functionality and pressing them will tilt the bike up and down. Uh, then you have the inside bonds for steering that is currently not supported by any app that I know of. Also, you have brake levers uh, that stops or increase that resistance to stop the flywheel Again, no app supports this functionality as of yet. So the bike is kind of future proof. So once Swift supports or any other app supports steering and braking, then it will probably be just a matter of a firmware update. The bike has a really good road feel, very smooth. The pedal stroke is smooth and did not feel glitchy in any way. You will find it to be much smoother than your real bike on a direct drive trainer. And that's because of all the integrated gearing and shifting. Also, the bike does have a little sway to it, so it's not totally rigid like uh, other indoor bikes and uh, found it to be more comfortable on longer rides than the tax in your bike, for example. So you will feel a little side to side rocking and also it does have a slight forward backward rocking motion to it, which I was not a fan of. And I'm not talking about the tilting that happens because of the gradient changes. This is just a constant rocking motion like there's something loose or uh, I need to tighten a bolt. And it doesn't feel the same as the fore aft motion that you see on the inside ride E-Motion rollers, for example, or the MP1 moving platform. It just did not feel natural to me and I just wasn't a fan of. As for riding, the bike felt very smooth and responded very well to gradient and also in erg mode. The kicker bike can support up to 2200 watts within 1% accuracy. And as for power measurement, it was very close to my Osioma pedals as you see here in a regular ride in sim mode in Zwift. 
Overall, it was really good. The kicker bike was measuring a tiny bit higher than my Asioma uh, power meter, but all within uh, 1%. So overall, I am very happy with the data and nothing really uh, to criticize here. In erg mode, Overall, it worked very well. Uh, here's my usual three by 10 minute test. Usually this is done with trainer road controlling the trainer. The first three warm up efforts, if I zoom into these efforts, you can see the kicker responded quickly and was within target or overshooting the target within two seconds. The kicker bike was within 1% of my Osseo and pedals again throughout these three 10 minute intervals. And that's using three different gearing combination because I just like to mess around with these trainers and put them through different testing scenarios that some companies didn't even think of. Uh, the power distribution using all three gearing combination is what I expect to see here, except for that first 10 minutes uh, or that first 10 minute interval. That interval was done in a very small gear and I usually expect to see a faster reaction time from the trainer to keep me close to my power target. But that wasn't the case here with the kicker bike. Uh, there was a little more variability in power distribution than what I expect to see. And But that doesn't mean it's a bad thing. I personally like it that way and I think it feels more natural than locking me at my target watt the whole uh, time. So from an accuracy standpoint, the bike was spot on and consistent. I also love the fact that the bike does not require calibration so you can just get on the bike and go. As for noise, the bike has a unique noise to it. There's that humming type noise that you'll hear at particularly low speeds and it became more pronounced when I put my headset on and I try to capture that humming noise from inside the headset. So I actually put a small mic inside my headset so you hear what I'm talking about. And I think it captured it very well. So here's how it sound. These headsets have a noise canceling feature and it does minimize that humming noise when I turn noise canceling on. I could still hear it, but not as loud. But as you start pedaling and increase that speed, the noise go away and I usually do not notice it uh, any longer after about a minute or so uh, or my, maybe my ear just get used to it. Definitely not as loud as an old kicker direct drive trainer, but also not as quiet as the current model of the kicker direct drive trainer. But usually that kind of humming noise love to go through walls and here's how it sounds when I am one floor down in the basement. Keep in mind the subfloor here is very thin and most likely if you live in an apartment you will have a thicker floor and better noise uh, proofing. Again, as you speed up, the noise goes away and here's how the bike sounds. Okay, the kicker bike is a really solid advanced smart bike that is full of features and will make riding indoors a lot more enjoyable and streamlined. It is accurate, does not require calibration, and it is not loud. Uh, the Wahoo Fitness app is so well done and makes it easy to replicate your bike fit, create different profiles with different shifting. The traditional bike design, the tilting to simulate gradient changes makes it feel like a real bike. I did miss not having a place to keep my iPhone or tablet, my guess is Wahoo is hoping that most will go and purchase the kicker desk uh, for another $250 and possibly also get the Wahoo element or element by computer or I mean element bolt by computer to use instead of the screen to complete the bike setup which will get you closer to or over $4,000 for a full bike setup. So do I recommend this bike? Is it worth spending $3,500? I would say if you are dead serious about indoor training and getting fit, if you switch between indoor riding and outdoor riding a lot and do not want to keep switching uh, re or removing your bike from your trainer and taking the wheel off, or if you have another cyclist in your household or even a significant other that just want to stay fit and possibly do peloton spinning classes and do not want to uh, go and purchase another dedicated bike, or your ideal number of bike is 
and plus one, then I would say go for it. The more time I spent on these stationary bikes, the more I am liking the idea of just having a dedicated indoor bike. Okay, hopefully I covered everything here. If you have any question, let me know down in the comment section below. And if you are interested in this bike or any smart trainer, make sure to check out smartbiketrainers.com for up-to-date pricing and deals. I usually keep my eyes on all trainer prices and update the website throughout the year. So that's all I have. Hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to hit the like button if you did. And if you're still watching and haven't subscribed yet, then you know what to do. Thank you for watching and uh, see you guys in the next one.